<laughs> that is not how I would picture an alewife. No. <laughs> Yes, yes. What is this? Cheeky pint. Cheeky pint, thank you. Cheers, my darling. Smell very much. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's cold. Oh, it's European. Can you do it to save my, my sweet friend? Right, what are we watching? We are watching Britain's Greatest Obsessions. Mm -hmm. This bunch of borderline national treasures will guide you through the history of these British preoccupations. Is it a thing peculiar to the British? This is Britain's Greatest Obsessions. Britain's Greatest Obsessions, tea, putting the kettle on, 100%. I think also mm -hmm. there's like, you can expand that. Mm. Cream tea, afternoon tea. Mm -hmm. Today's subject, pubs. And who better to lead this journey of exploration over a tipple or two than none other than myself, Suggs. You may know me as the front man of madness, but I have a long history with pubs. My mum raising me whilst she pulled a pint in Soho to the band getting their first break at a pub in Camden Town. Is Madness the one that do our house in the middle, middle of, of the street? street? It's him. And for this one, it should be our public house right. in the middle, because it's a pub. Do you like the pub? I absolutely love the pub. I love nothing more, genuinely, than walking past a pub at about 11 in the morning, OK, they're sitting up, and you can just smell the stale beer like that pub smell going past. And I'm like, you like that. I want to be in there. So what is it about the pub? I mean, where do these, where, where, where do we start? So inns, ale houses and taverns used to be three totally different establishments. So you get the grandness from the tavern, you get the informality and the coziness from the ale house, and then you get the kind of hanging horse brasses and big rooms and stuff and food from the inn. That's about... interesting, isn't it? So the grandness of a tavern, Basically, our equivalent of like Soho House, then an okay. ale house, like an all bar one, and then an inn, weather spoons. Simple. But they were all separate. Oh, yeah, you have to have membership for the um, top place. All bar one, trousers, please. Put your shirt on, sir. Mm -hmm. Weather spoons. Have you paid that lady? What do you believe is the history of women and beer? A long, long centuries long history of women and beer. And some people might go, really? So let's go. Women were the main brewers of beer in the Middle Ages. Which again is it? Tell them, see? Yeah. Mm-hmm, main brewers of beer, because we know what's good. But annoyingly, what? no beer is named after women, but quite a few after men. Mm. John Smith, Sam Smith. What about Stella? Stella's a girl's name. <laughs> Stella, you absolutely got me there. Here we go. You, yep, OK, <laughs> crack on. Often alewives in the Middle Ages were... Uh, doing this job, making food, <laughs> <laughs> that is not how I would picture an alewife. No. <laughs> she looks like she's about to embalm someone who's just died of the Black Death. Size that rough. Size <laughs> that nose. Size that chin. I'm finding out about the place pub culture plays in our society and learnt to my astonishment that as late as the 80s, despite being the original brewers of beer back in the Middle Ages, some pubs still refuse to serve women at the bar. Until, that is, a group of women, quite rightly, went to court to challenge this bit of nonsense. Fight the power, that's what they're doing. Fight men. They're saying, fight the power, we want to go for a drink. Yeah, no fair play to mm -hmm. Men are scum. Thank you. No worries. They challenged it, took it all the way to the Court of Appeal, because before that, women were only allowed to be served at the table. I mean, what's that about? <laughs> like, I remember going to clubs and bars growing up, and they're like, how many of you are there? You've got like, four blokes going, no, nah, not enough women. So that wouldn't happen in them days, would it? Mm -mm. If you did stop going to pubs, what made you stop? Just fizzled out. It did, didn't it? I, I mean, I don't have a need to meet people that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is something to do with getting older. I mean? Yeah, I really do. So, uh, if I know them, then I don't need to go to a pub, <laughs> I can go to their house. Yeah, or but they can I come think... to mine. Yeah, I... see, I don't like having people around. Thank you, Harry. Harry Thank knows you. what's good. Harry knows what's good. Mm -hmm. Myself included, a trip to the pub is a means of escape. French house. That was the French house. You know every pub. Every You're like pub. a pub encyclopedia. <laughs> oh. <Apparently> <laughs> to while away the hours over a drink with close friends. Yeah. Drinks are on you, Simon. Yeah. But for me, and I think scores of others, it also has a wider significance. It's the place I grew up in, 
learnt my trade, remember my mum and where I met my wife. In short, it's a home away from home. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I honestly thought I knew everything there was to know about pubs. Mm. But actually, my eyes have been opened. I've learned a little bit. Women have not been able to go into pubs for certain times. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, more mm -hmm. recently. And women were the ones that were brewing the beer. Yes, they were. Mm -hmm. We also found out that Suggs grew up in a pub in Soho. Oh, madness. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Next.